Thank you everyone for joining me today. And I am blessed to have with me um, Father Photius Avant. He is the pastor of St. Sava Orthodox Church in Texas. Thank you, Father. Thank you for having me, Joseph. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk mainly about today um, a particular book that was introduced to me quite a few years ago. Um, it's called um, Christian Faith and Same-Sex Attraction by Father Thomas Hopko. Now, he was an Orthodox priest here in the United States. Uh, I didn't know him. Um, he's, he's since passed on in 2015, right, Father? Yes, it was it was very recent. I, I actually I can't remember the year, but he was uh, he was the beloved uh, dean of Saint Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary in New York. Um, you know, great author. Um, you know, great uh, great writer, um, and just an overall great man. Uh, uh, everybody loved Father Thomas. So <laughs> yeah, it 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 it, so it sounds like it. The book is not. I mean, it's not a thick book. It's it's a little over 150. No, not even that. It's like 136 yeah. pages. But yeah. I mean, it, it's jam packed. I've read it several times. I just oh yeah, it. yeah. I just reread it again. I would say it's pretty accessible to someone who is not Orthodox, which which I'm not. Um, mm -hmm. But there is some things that I, I hopefully you can unpack for every everybody. Sure, sure. Um, now he he stop he starts and correct me, Father, because I don't have a background mm. in theology or orthodoxy or although my dad was raised um, Byzantine Catholic. Um, he starts out with sort of a Christology, I guess you could could yes use that, right okay. Um, and he talks about well, let me just read this to you, Father. The first title for Jesus in the Christian Gospels is Bridegroom. This is not surprising since the prevalent image in the Bible for Yahweh's relation to Israel is that of conjugal love. And this is where he sets. Could you explain a little bit more about Christ as Bridegroom? Could you? Absolutely. Well, this is really intimately tied um, to the understanding of Yahweh and his people um, uh, with regard to the Old Testament. Whenever uh, the Lord delivers his people out of, uh, the, out of Egypt, out of slavery, uh, he declares that he is going to abide immediately among them. Um, that he is not simply going to dwell aloof in the heavens, he is going to abide like with his people, actually among them. Um, and the, the nature of this relationship um, is a spousal relationship. Um, uh, we, see, uh, 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 we see the Lord express this uh, particularly in um, the prophecy of Jeremiah, um, where, uh, where he looks to his people as his bride. He looks to his people as his bride and um, the Lord's presence among his people is that of Christ among his people. You know, wh whenever um, in, um, in the book of Acts, um, whenever the, um, uh, the angel of the Lord, um, uh, who uh, uh, those familiar with Orthodox theology understand this to be Christ, uh, in whom the name of Yahweh rests, in whom the name of Yahweh uh, exists, uh, when he tells the people of Israel that he's leaving them um, uh, on, on account of their lack of repentance, their uh, continuing in sin, and, um, and, and yeah, their lack of repentance, um, uh, he says he's going to leave uh, because um, it, it, he is afraid that his holiness is going to harm them because of their lack of repentance. And so, um, and so um, he leaves, and we understand this to be Christ, and when he leaves, his protection goes with him, and the people are susceptible to all kinds of threats. Uh, they get invaded uh, by the Moabites, 
uh, and by various other Canaanite peoples. Uh, you know, they get invaded by foreign empires, that sort of thing. Um, and so really, Christ uh, being put forward as the bridegroom, this is nothing radically new. Um, uh, uh, because God has already existed among his chosen people as a, bri as a bridegroom with a bride. Um, uh, what is unique in Christ uh, is uh, now kind of who has, who has the ability to be called the bride. Uh, uh, it, you know, that, that's, kind, that's kind of the new thing. Well, now the Gentiles have the ability to be grafted in uh, to the people of God, and the Gentiles have the ability to become the bride of Christ. Um, but but in, in this sense, yeah, uh, Christ cast as bridegroom um, is, is, is nothing really radically very new. Um, it's, it's perfectly consonant with Yahweh's um, understanding of his relationship with his people, um, if, that, if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> it, no, it does. It does. He, he gets, he's laying a, 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 a framework, I think, in, in this book that's, that's really, it really takes you along. I mean, it took me along because it, when I was reading, I was like, okay, what does this have to do with homosexuality? You know, Christ is. Yes. And then he keeps, he keeps, he keeps going. And then yeah. he talks about the, a threefold dimensional experience. He writes, the threefold experience, the goodness of creation, its corruption by, oh my gosh, that's a hard word to say, its corruption by creaturely evil, and its redemption and deification in Christ illumines all things for those who repent, believe, and are baptized in the Orthodox Church. And this starts getting into the meat of his argument, which is sort of counter to what we're hearing in the Catholic Church, considering homosexuality, because he talks about um, the, corrup uh, the corruption of the world by human sin. And he also talks about um, the conviction that God does not make human beings, you know, homosexual, that this is a part of the human humans fallen nature yes sir yes sir absolutely um uh, it is it is uh, it is certainly part and parcel with that um you know our condition our fallen human condition has brought about all manner of tragedies um and um and, and you know uh, those tragedies and those corruptions um, touch every aspect of our being. Sexuality is simply one of those levels. Um, uh, it, it's, it's simply one of those levels um, it, that the, the human problem of sin um, has, uh, has touched upon and has corrupted. And, 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 and granted, what, you know, uh, what we call now in the 21st century homosexuality is just one aspect of said corruption. There are many other ways in which it can be corrupted, uh, it, it, you know, um, but that's just, that's one way, so. Right. Then he talks about, I'm jumping around, but I'm kind of following his, um, his, his um, outline in, in the book. Mm. So, so, you know, he, he talks about the bridegroom, then he talks about, you know, sin. Yes. And the uh, man's fallen nature. Then, then he did a different chapter, which was interesting. It's called Same-Sex Attraction and Goodness. He wrote, mm -hmm. and he's talking about homosexuals there or people who have same-sex attraction. He said, they are seeking satisfaction, fulfillment, comfort, and joy. In Christian terms, they are longing for holiness and union with God and with all creatures in God. He said, and this is where I, got, I have to say, Father, I got a little confused. Because sure. <laughs> he said all human beings are good by nature. Yes, yes. Now, before he was talking about this propensity to sin. Yes, sir. Could, could, you, could you help me with that? Just, just help me clear Absolutely. that up. Absolutely. Okay, thank um, you. 
yeah, what we're talking about here is um, the difference between nature, um, uh, uh, you know, what the thing is in and of itself, um, and, and sin is really the corruption of nature, a thing moving away from that which is proper to itself. Um, uh, it, you know, uh, human beings were created for one thing, but we opted for another. Um, uh, so by virtue of the fact that we were created by God, um, we are good. Um, you know, our, our nature, our, our human nature is good. God didn't make anything and look at it and say that it was bad. Okay. Examine Genesis. Okay. You're not going to find it. Okay, uh, everything uh, within everything that he made is good because he made it. It becomes corrupted by our free agency, or rather by the misuse of our free agency. That's how the corruption enters in. And again, this doesn't this doesn't then make our nature bad. No, our our nature is still good because it's made by God but it has been twisted, okay? It has been, it has been taken away from that which is proper to itself, if, right. if that makes sense. I always check for understanding. Perfect. I, I'm sorry, I'm an, I'm an old school teacher and I'm, I always check for understanding. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay, Perfect. glory to God, glory yeah. to God. <laughs> <laughs> um, this brings up an, another point that he makes that is one, that I've always tried to articulate, but I, I can't do it as well or as succinctly as, mm -hmm. as he does. And specifically, like in Roman Catholicism, I don't mm -hmm. know if this is an issue in orthodoxy, I kind of doubt it. But um, in terms of pastoral min ministry to people who are homosexual, homosexual, specifically that are in a same-sex relationship, you know, or, mm -hmm. or a marriage. Sure. Sometimes pastorally, they'll look at that relationship, let's say the homosexual relationship, similar mm. to a way, in, a, in a way that they would look at, say, an opposite sex couple that's shacked up. Mm. Okay. It's the same sort of issue here. You know, it's a imperfect relationship. But mm. this, one, this one over here, the gay one can't be redeemed. The gay no. relationship, right? No. So he he wrote this. Here. While sexual intercourse between a man and a woman has the possibility of being a pure and proper actualization of divine love, when enacted in a godly manner, homosexual intercourse does not. So no. You, yeah. So there's something infinitely redeemable, although yes. it might it might be dysfunctional. With, with yeah. a couple that's shacked up, hey, they could get married, they could, they could yes. return to church, confession, have that all cleaned up. This yes, one sir. over here, mm, not so, you know. No, no, yeah, yeah, the, 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 uh, the other one over there, yeah, uh, uh, that, that cannot be blessed. Um, it, it, it cannot be baptized. Um, and the, um, the enduring question for those um, who would, who would like to argue that it can be, you know, blessed and baptized is, you know, well, why, why not? You know, I mean, love is love, right? Uh, it, it, you know, uh, uh, love is love. You know, you're, um, you're being rather backwards about this. Um, and, um, and well, just to, to kind of cut to the heart of the matter regarding why that cannot be blessed. Um, we have to consider the nature of love um, and um, the, the dynamics therein, uh, you know, particularly with regard uh, to those who are different from one another. God loves human beings deeply. Um, human beings are his, uh, you know, the crown of his creation. He absolutely loves human beings. And human beings are absolutely different from him, okay? Positively different. Human beings are not like him. We are made in his image. Um, and uh, through, our, through Christ Jesus and cooperating with God's uncreated grace, 
we have the ability to attain more and more to his likeness. Um, but apart from that, there's this chasm between us. He is uncreated. We are created. He is infinite. We are finite. Okay. Um, you know, he is holy and we not so much. Um, uh, uh, th there's that. And yet um, he loves us. Uh, he loves us dearly and deeply in spite of that chasm of difference between us. Um, uh, he loves his people um, uh, whom he frees from the land of Egypt, okay? Um, uh, does he love his people because his people are good and faithful and wonderful and they're just so lovable? No, he doesn't. You know, uh, his people, uh, uh, you know, back then and his people now, today, the church, we're none of those things. We're not lovable. We're not great. We're, we're rotten, uh, <laughs> you know, and yet he loves us yeah. the love of the one for uh, for the one who is different um uh, uh from him now why am i mentioning this because the marriage of a man and a woman um as saint paul shows us is really in so many ways an image of christ and the church right. of god and creation does this, Between, father, does this bring in the, because I, I was going to ask you to do this later, but you're doing it now. And okay. does, does this bring in the image of the bridegroom? Yes. Is, is that, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, uh, uh, th this is, it, it, it all ties together. Um, uh, the, um, uh, uh, in a marriage between a man and a woman, um, a man is called upon to love his wife, as Christ loves the church and gave himself for her. He's called upon to love her. Now, why is he called upon to love her as Christ loves the church and gave himself for her? Um, why is this? Well, because there will be a great many times when the wife is less than lovable. Um, uh, because, uh, well, because, uh, just bear with me, um, men and women do not understand one another. Right. Okay. Let me say that again. Men and women do not understand one another. We don't get one another, okay? We think differently, okay? The, the, the way we speak, it, 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 you know, what, what, we can say the same things and be meaning completely different things. Or I say something, but she thought I meant this. Oh, dear, you know, and we bite our nails. Uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. But men and women do not get one another there is this chasm of unknowing between us. Um, uh, we're just, we're not gonna get each other, okay? And yet, in spite of that lack of understanding one another, we are called upon to love one another in spite of that. A man is called upon to love his wife, a wife is called upon to respect her husband, okay? She's called upon to respect him because he might not always be respectable, okay? Uh, 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 you know, the, the wife might not always be lovable. The husband might not always be respectable, but they're called upon to do this. Um, and in this dynamic of, uh, of loving the one whom you don't understand, you have the ability to become more and more like our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, more and more like him. Okay, yeah. in a same sex, in a same sex relationship, there's no mystery. Mm -hmm. um, men understand men, women yeah. understand women. Yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it's really it, it's really pretty simple. You, you know, that's not to say that such relationships uh, don't have uh, don't have difficulties and there aren't disagreements. But on that most basic level, a man understands a man. A woman understands a woman, you know. And so there's not really any potential for growth there. Uh, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a lot of fun, and, uh, and, uh, but, it, it's, uh, but there's no potential for um, Christ-like holiness, you know. You, you got ahead of me, Father. You're so smart. But, I'm but so I, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's cool, it's cool. So, um, and I, but I just wanted part and parcel something that you said the, within the complimentary, because that was the next thing I was going to get to with Father Hopko, 
is mm. that because I think instinctively they realize that there's not a complementary there, a lot of times in same sex relationships, you see this accentuation of difference. Yes. And, and I don't want to be explicit with people, but you well, have yeah. someone like, let's just say in, a, yeah. in two men, you have one that's maybe more masculine, more dominant. And yes. then maybe one that is more passive and maybe more feminine. Yes, yes. And the same dynamic with lesbians. Um, it, you know, the more, the more masculine one, you know, the more, uh, the more passive one. Um, it, you know, there's this tacit recognition there um, uh, that there has, to, there has to be that dynamic um, within um, the relationship. Um, there is this understanding, and yet, you know, uh, try as one might, you know, a man cannot be a woman, and a woman cannot be a man. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, you can try to kind of compensate for those roles, you, you know, um, but ultimately it's, a, you know, it's an exercise in futility. Um, it's, it, it's not going to work. Um, but yes, that, that I, I'm positively aware of that dynamic. <laughs> I'll just say it too. I was going to save this for later, but just, so, but, but it goes right with what you were saying. Also, a, a man cannot be a woman. And also the anus is not a vagina. It's not, it's not, uh, 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 uh the, the, uh, um, uh, and, and, and very, and, and I mean, to be quite explicit, <laughs> um, um, it, it's, it, it's not, um, you know, the anus has a, a very distinct function and that is for, you know, letting the garbage go. Uh, it, it, you know, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an exit. It's not a two way door. Um, uh, you know, that's just, it, you know, we look, we look at the way we're made that, uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't lend itself to that. Uh, the, the vagina, by contrast, um, is made uh, 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 for that, is made for that, you know, that intimate union um, and, uh, and has the, uh, uh, you know, lends itself, uh, you know, well, <laughs> leads to the womb, which lends itself to conception. You know, um, uh, it's it, it's a beautiful design, um, and and and, sadly, and, and yeah. conversely, the man is the complementary to that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, God knew, uh, God knew uh, what he was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, and we <laughs> see this com we we see this complementarity, um, uh, you know, through uh, throughout all of creation, um, and this is this is the means by which you know, life uh, goes forward. This is the, the, the means by which, um, you, you know, the species is regenerated, you know, and that's, uh, and that's every species which engages in sexual reproduction, you know, um, uh, it, it, you know, so, um, so yeah, yeah, uh, it, there is something special about that. There is something special about maleness, and there is something special about femaleness, okay? Each one is, is a blessing. Each one uh, is a crown uh, that, uh, you know, that, that needs to be celebrated, you know? Um, and, and too often, uh, people don't understand this. Uh, uh, people don't understand, you know, kind of the majesty of manhood or the majesty of womanhood. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's perhaps a whole other, uh, uh, kettle of fish, uh, uh, to get into. Uh, but, um, but, but yeah, it's, it's one of those problems. So. This is where Father Hop go. I mean, uh, this is where I was saying we got ahead of ourselves. That's, that's fine. Father Hop co wrote, <laughs> well-being of humanity requires the complementary communion of male and female in which, according to the second creation story of Genesis, the woman, the woman's task as woman is to be the helper comparable to man for whom it, it is not good to be alone. And then he talks about all men married and unmarried need women and women, excuse me, in order mm -hmm. to fill their humanity made in God's image. I, I just oh, want to get yeah, I just want to get your reaction to this, Father. Actually, I sort of came to that conclusion um, before I was even Christian. 
I mm. was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I realized it, you know, attached to our last conversation, I realized it in my own body. That sure. It, that it wasn't working. But then, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the book and the, the band played on. It was written by a gay guy called um, uh, Randy I'm, Schultz. Remember? Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with it, but I have not read it yet. It's on, okay. it's on my list. <laughs> right, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big, thick book, but it's very good. It's really readable. And he, he wrote something. And the first time I read it, the band played on probably in the early 90s. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just, whoosh, you know, went over my head. But later, when Gay was sort of not checking out to be so good, I, I, I mm -hmm. had read it again, and it just hit me right here. And mm. he wrote, the trouble was that, by definition, you had a gay male subculture in which there was nothing to moderate the utterly male values that were being uh, adulated more religiously than mm. a macho heterosexual could imagine. Yeah. Promiscuity was rampant because in an all-male subculture, there was nobody to say no. No moderating role like that a woman yeah. plays in the heterosexual milieu. Yes. Yeah. When I read that, I was like, dang. Yeah. I said, that is it. That's why things went so out of control. Well, and because with men, it's, it's just, so it's a green light all the time. It, 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 you know, that's, that's the way we are. Um, uh, it, you know, I mean, the, the genitive principle, the masculine principle is an active one. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, it, uh, and, and yeah, the, the, the light is always green. Uh, you, you know, so, it, you know, no, a man is never going to tell another man, no, you know, it's always, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, do it, you know? Uh, and so, uh, and so, yeah, yeah, there's, there's not going to be anyone to say, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, you should slow down. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't, you know, no, no, that's, that's not going to be the case, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, it's quite correct. It's, it's, yeah, you're, it's, with, within hetero, homosexuality, you're right, women do not, they're, women are, are a safeguard, I th maybe I'm wrong, because you're, you're a married man, you have kids, yes. I've, I've never been married, have no children, but mm -hmm. women, I think, temper men. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> very much so. A man, a, a man needs a strong woman in his life, whether she's his wife or not. Uh, right. uh, uh, you know, uh, to temper him, a, a man has to have this. You know, it's just it, it's it's necessary. We have to have that. We have to have that receptive, nurturing principle at work in our lives. Um, uh, because, you know, uh, uh, you know, being the genitive, you know, active principle, uh, it, you know, we're always, you know, going with, you know, uh, you know, uh, all cylinders humming, uh, it, it, you know, uh, we, we require, uh, we require the, the measured feminine response, it, you know, uh, to get us to kind of, you know, rethink our course, rethink what we're doing, you know, we positively need that. Every man needs that. Right. The, and and because you talked earlier, and hey, again, you, you got ahead of me, Father, because you're I'm so sorry. smart. <laughs> no, 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 you're so smart. So, you know, you, you, you forecasted what I was going to talk about because um, you talked about men and women being different. And, and for a time, you know, I was bisexual. I had sexual relations mm -hmm. with men and women. Mm -hmm. Women would not do certain things that men would do like yeah. uh, and not to be graphic yeah women would not have indiscriminate sex in a dirty public yeah. bathroom they yeah. just yeah. wouldn't do it not even yeah. not even prostitutes would do that men you yeah. could find a lot of men that wouldn't have a big problem mm -hmm. yeah with, yeah with yeah that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no there's there, there's a difference am uh, I saying that women are more discriminating I think they are Yes, I think that's well, biological too, because women well, well, carry a yeah. child, men don't. Well, and but but I mean, it it falls to it falls to the female of our species. If 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 I'm going to you know speak in uh, you know biological terms, you know to be discriminating, uh, it, it, you know um, you know they have to. Uh, they're the ones who get to decide. You know, is this guy really worth it or not? 
it, it, you know, uh, is he uh, is he going to stick around? Is he going to be helpful? Is he going to help me and the child? You know, or is he going to be a dirty bum? And is he going to roll on? You know, after he's had his fun. You know, um, uh, uh, it, so it absolutely falls to the woman to you know say no. Uh, it, you know, no, absolutely not, you know, and then, it, you know, whereas, you know, for men or, uh, you know, you know, um, you know, they're just kind of like, well, you know, yes, I guess this will do, you know, so. I wasn't going to get into this topic, but you just made me think of it because the, the gay one is, is problematic enough. But what has happened with birth control? Because then women have really been allowed to be as raunchy as, as men. Well, because then um, they don't have that worry so much that, gee, I'm going to get yeah, pregnant and I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, um, I don't know, birth control is really served as one of, uh, one of those big two-edged swords, uh, which is kind of cut more heavily in one very bad direction uh, than another. And, and, and I, I don't mean to condemn it as a phenomenon, um, uh, but it certainly has lent itself to encouraging women to emulate men um uh, when um uh i guess i wasn't going to talk about this but uh, uh <laughs> in, in 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 american culture um it, you know the the sexual revolution starts in the 1950s um uh it, you know it, it it effectively starts in the 1950s and surprise surprise it's an entirely male-led phenomenon you know, who, uh, who would have thought? Um, Hugh, Hef you know, Hugh Hefner at Playboy. Yeah, yes, yes. Hugh Hefner, uh, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't invent uh, the sexual revolution, but he certainly popularized and oh, yeah. capitalized upon the sexual revolution. The idea that a man can take any woman uh, whom he desires to bed with, that, with freedom from consequences, and the pill kind of, you know, helps make this possible, uh, uh, it, you know, was, uh, it, it's something that a great many men found very appealing. What happened in the 1960s um, with the rise of second wave feminism um, is Gloria Steinem and her ilk um, were, uh, were compelled to take the sexual revolution and use it as the engine for, um, uh, uh, for second wave feminism, you know, to, to really drive it forward. Um, the there is a key problem with all of this okay um uh it, it at no point did either um the, the front led by hugh hefner or the front uh led by uh gloria steinem at no point did, did anyone have a very clear a clearly stated anthropology um uh th that is what does it mean to be man what does it mean to be human Okay, the closest thing Hugh, Hugh Hefner could come to it was, what does it mean to be man? Well, it means to, you know, wantonly take to bed as many women as you want. And Gloria Steinem was pointing at Hugh Hefner, talking about what a pig he was, um, and then saying, okay, women, well, we should basically use Hugh Hefner's model for what it means to be a man. That's what it means to be a woman. You know, um, and so you're dealing with a faulty premise of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman being a driving force in the culture, you know, um, and, you know, now the chickens have come home to roost uh, and it's disastrous. You know, it's positively disastrous. So, yeah. And then in the, um, you know, and then in the same year, what, 1970, uh, what was it, two? You had um, Roe v. Wade, and then you also had the the DSM, which was the Diagnostic Statistical Manual uh, yeah. uh, for um, psychiatry, which declassified homosexuality as a mental illness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, those two things, and then it was kind of all all fair at that point. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the the, uh, the reclassification of uh, I don't know. I, I think there's more of a discussion to be held about the declassification of homosexuality as a mental illness as such. Um, I, I don't know that I would, qual I, I would necessarily qualify it, qualify it as, a, as a mental illness as such uh, that you know, has a, you know, um, 
a clinical way of being treated. Um, but um, by the same token, you would see in subsequent years that politics would play uh, a significant role um, in uh, the redefining of various um, uh, uh, various neuroses within the DSM as, oh no, that's not a neurosis, that's that's just an orientation, it, 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 you know. Uh, yeah. And there, there's a move for that, uh, you know, with uh, with pedophilia right now. Oh, yeah. Know? I yeah. mean, so it's it's going on, it, 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 you know. Uh, I know the LGBT community is doing what they can to try to visibly distance themselves from that group, but that group's rhetoric is ultimately no different. You know, if, if, if we can ask the question, you know, what is gender. I hate using the word gender uh, because gender applies to grammar, you know, not to biology, okay? But uh, for the sake of argument, I'll say, it, it, you know, if we can ask what is gender that it should separate two people who want to do the thing, um, then logically it, it, it stands to reason that we can ask what is age. Yeah. It, 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 you know, um, but, um, uh, but, but yeah, uh, that's, that, that's one issue. The, um, and yeah, the, the, uh, with the passing of Roe versus Wade, that, um, uh, that that's one of the great catastrophes in um, in American history. You know, I am of that generation. I was born in the seventies. You know, um, and so uh, you know, a third of us didn't get to get born. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it's just like it, it, you know, a, a third of us didn't get to get born. That's horrifying. Yeah. That's positively horrifying. So. Yeah. That, yeah, somebody that was aborted could have had the cure for cancer, or oh, I know, yeah, or yeah. or the cure or the cure for AIDS. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, in any number of problems, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, you know, any number of uh, of of those babies. I mean, you know, we're talking sixty, you know, sixty five plus million dead babies. It, you know, I mean, and, and and yet, and but we're the good guys. Okay, we're, we're the good guys. I mean, Hitler didn't have those numbers. Stalin didn't have those numbers. Maybe we're kind of, you know, about equal with Chairman Mao on that, uh, it, it, you know, but, you know, we hold ourselves up as, as the good guys when we've had this ongoing Holocaust in this country since 1973. So, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy. It is, Father. One of the things, too, that, that, that was a consequence of that declassification of homosexuality is I mean, even within the LGBT community, it was like, well, what is it? So yeah. I mean, that's, and I'm going to talk about this later because Hofko yes. talks about it too, as well, are mm. people born gay? Um, yeah. I, one other thing I wanted to, to um, get your reaction to that he wrote, he wrote, sexual intercourse between people of the same sex is incapable of expressing divine love because of the incapability of human beings of the same sex to be sexually united in a mutually fulfilling, complementary, life-creating, and life-enhancing mm. matter. In a word, same-sex attraction resulting in same-sex intercourse, however enacted, is a betrayal of the love God wills for his people. Can't get any clearer than that. There's a lot there, Father. He talks about oh, yeah. com complementary, mutually fulfilling, all that stuff, life-creating, life-enhancing. Oh yeah, 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 um, uh, and it, it, it's um, all I can say is yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 right about that. Um, uh, it it, um, uh, it it's um, it is not life affirming. Um, it does not lend itself uh, to life. Um, it, it, you know, twenty uh, well, you know, twenty first century man and woman, um, it, you know, are just absolutely shocked. Um, that you know when they have sex uh, uh you know a baby results <gasps> what is this uh it, it, you know it's just like okay this is the primary function of uh, uh, uh of the uh, uh of the thing uh, uh it, it, you know uh i don't know if that sounded juvenile of the thing no it didn't uh, 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 no. but uh, but but uh, uh, uh but that that's a uh, but that's a primary function of it. that's what it does that's not all it does uh it, it, you know um it serves as this really as a strong spiritual bond uh between uh the man and the woman you know um you know it, it serves to bring them 
closer together, um, it, you know, as an expression of their mutual love for one another. Um, it, it has all of these wonderful uh, spiritual and psychic dimensions to it, you know. Um, uh, for the same sex couple, that's out of the question, you know. Um, it's really not the about that. Yeah, Father, the argument they would use is well, you know, an older couple, maybe they're both widowed they marry the the woman is past menopause there's no possibility of mm -hmm. uh having a child yeah um so what's the difference between that couple and a same-sex couple well the difference is that the uh that the <laughs> the man and the woman had the ability to have children at one point you know um or or, or even if not you know i think about uh you know the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, yes. uh, who were well advanced in years and who had yep. no children because she was barren. You know, well, uh, you know, what's the difference between uh, the, uh, you know their marriage bed with her not being able to have children and two men or two women? You know, well, the difference is uh, that uh, that there's still a window of uh, opportunity of of availability. Um, for life, and indeed, that was uh, that was the case. You know, we see also in this that it, it's that uh, you know um, procreation for the sake of children is not the primary purpose of uh, sex within marriage. Um, they understood that this wasn't uh, that you know uh, Elizabeth couldn't conceive, and yet they came together anyway. Um, you know, because of their mutual love for one another, you know, but, and what resulted from that? John the Baptist, uh, yeah. in, in, you know, the greatest of the prophets uh, results from that union. Um, it, you, you know, you're not, you're not going to get that, uh, you know, from the two dudes or, you know, the two ladies. It's just, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to lend itself to that. It, it, they, uh, you, you know, there's the issue of child raising and child rearing and, you know, homosexual couples will adopt children um and uh, i don't know uh, but even that in itself is depending upon the natural usage you know a you know a man and a woman coming together it depends upon that you know uh, it's not in spite of that so or at least a sperm and an egg because a lot of, yeah. of same-sex couples use these invert in vitro fertilization ver yeah in vitro yeah. fertilization with surrogates yes is yeah. a whole other it's yeah um, that's a, another can of worms yeah i know this is uh, father hopko one of the parts about the book that i really liked well i like the whole thing um but he <laughs> talks about suffering and having the homosexual condition and which was which is really beautiful because i think in in some of the literature in catholicism i think sometimes it's lacking and he wrote mm -hmm. this um about homosexuality. It is a providential cross to be born and not a divine gift to be celebrated. This is really, yeah, this yeah. is really yeah. important because in, I don't know if this is an issue in orthodoxy, though I doubt it. Um, yeah. Within Roman Catholicism right now, there is this notion, theory, whatever, the queer theology, that homosexuality is a divine gift. As, as he yeah. said, he's divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah. To, be, to be celebrated. And I mean, in the LGB secular community, I mean, it's mm. pretty an irreligious lot. I mean, they talk a lot yeah. about born gay, being born yeah. this way. Yeah. And I, I can yeah. kind of deal with that because, yeah. I mean, there are studies a lot of times done by, by gay male scientists, and they really have not found any, and they'll admit it, they haven't found any definitive proof it doesn't homosexuality is is genetic they they just no. haven't they haven't found it There's so no i mean evidence. yeah so that sort of argument you can kind of deal with in catholic roman catholicism you have this you know god made me gay you yeah. know that is yeah. much difficult to deal with because then there's like a mindset in the person yeah. God made me this way it's beautiful god made me good god doesn't make mistakes god doesn't make mm -hmm. junk you know blah blah, mm -hmm. blah. I'm, I'm repeating all their arguments. You sure. Know, and, if, and if you, you not you necessarily, Father, yes. but anybody, yeah. Yeah. if you are saying that, you're not only against me personally, but you're against mm. God. You're against yeah. God. This is yeah. 
big. Yeah, it, it's a it's a really lame argument, um, <laughs> you know, because it flies in the face of Scripture, um, uh, uh, and uh, you know, Christ uh, uh, Christ comes to us within the context of the Old Testament Scriptures, and 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 warrants a uh, warrants a kind of radical rereading of the Old Testament Scriptures, um, uh, but um, you know, in the New Testament. Um, uh, we we are shown that the the strictures regarding that particular aspect of human life have not changed. Uh, they have not passed away. You know uh, what has changed are you know the means of dealing with it. Okay. Well, no longer will it be the case that you know the two shall be you know taken beyond the gates of the city and stoned to death that the abomination may be crushed out of Israel. Um, you know, now uh, the emphasis is on, well, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Right. That does not excuse the okay. sin. That it, it doesn't, uh, it, and it doesn't diminish its reality as sin. St. Paul talks about this rather extensively, Let rather explicitly. The Greek, actually, I mean, the, uh, y'all have to bear with me. The, the Greek language um, uh, when St. Paul talks about this is very explicit. Um, and we've kind of dressed it up nice for our, you know, our dainty uh, uh, English uh, ears, uh, it, you know, to, to, to kind of be able to handle. But when, but when St. Paul is talking about it, he's, he's being rather graphic and he's saying, no, you, you're not going this group of people, this group of people, this group of people, this group of people will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, you know, um, uh, and, uh, and it's, and it's because these conditions, uh, it, you know, whether, it, you know, it's adultery, drunkenness, you know, um, you know, uh, being the top or being the bottom, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever, these things are expressions of the disorder of sin, um, it, you know, and if we are intent upon doing nothing about it, um, uh, then uh, then we we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven um, uh, because uh, we, we we don't really have any interest in what the kingdom of heaven is all about. Yep. Therein lies the problem. It, it you know so so yeah the language of you know God made me this way is is rubbish and it doesn't take a very deep reading of scripture uh, or a very deep reading of the fathers either um, uh, to uh, 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 to warrant it you, you know um, I've um, uh, the I, I, I will say like with I don't know with regard to the Roman Catholic Church and with regard to the Orthodox Church those kinds of apologetics uh, exist uh, far more plentifully in the Roman Catholic Church oh yeah um, um, in in the Orthodox Church, we do have we do have some people uh, who are uh, who are kind of uh, proponents for this you, you know the, this new way of thinking you know uh, you know queer theology and and whatnot. Um, they represent a they represent a tiny minority. Um, within uh, within the Orthodox world, and they are overwhelmingly, um, uh, you know, upper middle class, wealthy white people right. living in their ivory towers. Um, you know, uh, saying that you no, know, oh no, no, we've got it all wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you know, you know, and thank God they showed up uh, to enlighten all the rest of us. You know, and, so. and Father, and I'm getting deep into the woods, but uh, Father, are they given? these voices within orthodoxy are they given a major platform of prestige in which to spout this stuff no no um uh that that uh that does not happen um uh now having said that and, and what i mean by that is um no there is no bishop who will endorse this okay there is not one bishop who will stand alongside these people and say yes Let's think about this. No, because uh, uh, because whatever synod he belongs to of whatever local Orthodox church would immediately call him out and and he would have serious problems, you know, uh, 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 quickly. So there's no bishop 
who openly endorses this. Um, what we have in our context is we have these people on the internet, okay? The internet uh, theologians, um, it, you know, um, and, there is, and there is quite a lack of oversight uh, with regard to these, uh, it, you know, people publish things, um, you know, without deference to the teaching of the church um, uh, all the time. Um, and nothing has been said to any of them so far by, by any of their ruling bishops. I personally take issue with that. Um, uh, you, you know, it is certainly part of the bishop's responsibility um, uh, to make sure that correct teaching is being done within his diocese. And if anyone is, um, if anyone is distorting the faith, particularly in a public way, that needs to be dealt with. Um, having said that, uh, yeah, there, there, there's no there's no comparable um, uh, um, uh, forum. There, there, there's no bishop and no groups of bishops who are saying, we really need to think about this. That's just not the case, you know. I know this isn't your problem, but I'm just gonna throw it out there. I mean, th within Roman Catholicism, um, you know, religious priests, lay people, are given the most prestigious platforms. Let's just say the Los Angeles Religious Education Congress was, is the largest gathering of Roman Catholics in the United yeah. States. I mean, yeah. and I've gone, these people are given a platform to say whatever they want and there is no counter argument. And then we've got bishops in, in Europe right now, Catholic bishops, they're sort of formulating a way forward in which the church could possibly bless same-sex unions. I mean, yeah. this stuff is on the table, and yeah. a lot yeah. of Catholics kind of turn a blind eye and say, eh, this is fringe. Hey, it's not fringe no more. No, it's not. It's, it, 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 the, the last thing it is is fringe. It is a growing movement. Uh, it, it is a gro growing and substantial movement, uh, one that the papacy must reckon with, uh, for one thing, um, and which the papacy has been curiously quiet about, um, you know, uh, so, um, so yeah, no, it, it, it's, it, 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 and, um, and not talking about it is not talking about the elephant in the room. Uh, it, it, you know, it's just like, oh, well, it's just, uh, it, it, you know, you, you have to, you have to go through some major mental gymnastics not to acknowledge it as a major movement within the Church of Rome. You well, know? Father, I wasn't going to go with this in this direction either but why not um <laughs> you, and, why you're, not? And, why not? and you're and you're a former catholic so yes, um the the issue see the, what adds on to this this perplexing you know mess in the catholic church is it within catholicism you have a large number of clerics who are gay yes. not necessarily actively gay although i no. say there's there is quite a few but they identify as gay and they're certainly sympathetic to the gay yeah. cause and oh, the, yeah. gay the gay movement. Mm -hmm. In my limited you know, experience with orthodoxy, I have not found that to be the case. <laughs> Where you have yeah. a large gay, I mean, you might have one or two mm -hmm. or a few, I don't know, but mm -hmm. there's not a large cabal of gay no. No. clergy. No. That's a, yeah, it, it's, it, it's not the case. Um, it, it, you know, um, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we may have, uh, we, we may have monks, uh, uh, or, uh, bishops, uh, who, you know, same sex attraction, uh, was a, uh, a, an issue for them or, you know, remains an issue, uh, for them. Um, uh, but, um, uh, but you, you don't have anyone, um, flying the rainbow flag. Um, uh, it, it's just, uh, it, or, it's, or using it as a culture cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh my, no, absolutely. Can you no. imagine? Oh, uh, no, well, no, no, no. It, it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can guarantee, you know, if, if ever, uh, that were done, um, it, you know, our, um, in our age in which, you know, everyone has smartphones and everyone takes pictures, uh, it, you know, one picture of that uh, forwarded to the bishop would warrant immediate yeah. action. I, yeah, I don't want to be blasphemous, but you couldn't imagine, like, the rainbow flag hanging from the external no. stasis. Oh, no. Oh, I absolutely mean, But not. the the equivalent of, of that happens in the Catholic Church every 
every June this weekend in yeah. specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pride, I, Pride I, weekend. It, yeah, it's 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 very tragic. Um, it, it, it's it, it's very tragic. Um, it, it, you know, um, I, I, you know, I, you know, considering my Catholic upbringing, I'm grateful for all uh, for all the good stuff uh, the Church of Rome gave me. Uh, it, it, you know, um, I, I thank God for it. Uh, and, uh, it, it led me to want more, <laughs> you, you know, um, and, uh, and, and I can't help but see all of this as a, a terrible tragedy, um, which is, um, uh, which is harmful to the faithful. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's a great source of scandal. Um, and how is any of it consonant with the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know, it's just, it's just not. It, you know, um, uh, there are people eagerly trying to conform the church uh, to the image of the world. They've got it backwards. You know, um, you know, it's we who need to be conformed to the image of Christ. You know, um, and uh, but uh, it, you know, it. it I I, um, I I quote uh, G. K. Chesterton this one particular quote um, uh, quite often uh, when, when he says that. Christianity is not one of those things uh, that has been tried and failed. Right. It is one of those things that has been discovered to be hard and right. as such has gone untried, you know. Um, and uh, it, it's not just that some of us don't want to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow after Christ. None of us want that. Yeah. None of us want to deny ourselves. None of us want to take up our cross and follow after Christ. None of us. Not it, it, You know, those it, even those of us who do it okay we don't want to uh, it, it, you know it, it it's it flies in the face of our self-fulfillment we don't want to do that you know and yet if we decide to take that path you know um our lives um, will be <laughs> united to the very inner life of god you know um it, you know orthodox christianity offers the the noblest view of the final destiny of man. When our Lord Jesus Christ is raised from the dead um, and after his time with his disciples, he ascends uh, into the heavens and sits at the right hand of the Father. There, where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, that is the picture of the final destiny of mankind. Not at God's feet, shining his boots, okay? But at his side at his table, that at this very moment, human flesh and blood sit at the right hand of God the Father. Wow. There's no nobler view of, uh, of mankind than this. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our most glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, exist bodily by uh, our Heavenly Father. Awesome. Awesome. Father, I know we've been, been talking, gosh, close to an hour. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get a few more questions in. Absolutely. Try, I'm, I'm trying, Father. <laughs> it's quite all right. I, okay, I, I and, appreciate it. Okay, and Father Hopko, of course, gets into St. Paul's letter to the Romans, and he, he writes this. The biblical reading is this. The fact that many people have sexual feelings and desires for persons of their own sex is among the most powerful proofs that human, that human being and life have become disordered by sin. One of the arguments about St. Paul that you hear repeated in the Catholic Church a lot is that that has to be understood in a historical context, meaning mm -hmm. that St. Paul had no knowledge of the modern conception of what homosexuality is. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not um, um, an owner and slave relationship. It's yeah. not um, an issue of rape or yeah. abuse, yeah. or uh, pederasty, or pedophilia, you know, yeah. it's about two adults in a loving relationship, and he did not understand this because he was speaking from a historical context, a Jewish, you know, rabbinical, mm -hmm. first, uh, therefore, yeah. you know, we have to look at his, um, you know, what you talked about, his condemnation of homosexual acts, as yeah. being very historically um, limited. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> if it, 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 it would be curious, it's curious that those who would say that, um, you know, they are followers of Jesus Christ um, would use this argument uh, with regard to St. Paul. No single apostle um, writes more about the crucified and risen Messiah than St. Paul. Okay, the bulk of the New Testament is his writing. Okay, why did Jesus Christ pick someone so backwards? Okay, uh, it, it, you know, I mean, if if they claim to you know uh, believe in Jesus Christ, you know, why would Christ you know pick someone with uh, you know with, with just such limited knowledge, such limited wisdom, uh, in order to articulate precisely? in what manner Christ fulfills the law and the prophets and how to live in response to the saving work of Christ. And, you know, why would he pick someone so backwards? And, uh, you know, it's, it's a curious thing um, because Christ doesn't come to us except through the apostles. We don't get to know him except through the preaching of the apostles. Um, the Gnostics in the second century had versions of Christ, um, uh, but those versions of Christ were not the ones uh, which had been given to the apostles. Uh, it is through the preaching of the apostles that we come to know Christ. So how can we, on the one hand, praise what St. Paul says about the crucified and risen Messiah, but then on the other hand, criticize what he says we should do in response to the saving work of the crucified and risen Messiah. How can we do that? How can we make that call? We can't, okay? Ultimately, it's our own preference that we're deferring to in that case, you know. Um, uh, it, it's, um, it, you know, and the idea that St. Paul wasn't aware of this is, it, it, it is a tired, uh, tired argument. Um, it, Maybe it's, in it's orthodoxy really... it's not, but not, unfortunately not in Roman Catholicism. It, yeah. It's just not. And I wouldn't even, because you know, I know you're dismissing a lot of these arguments, it's like you say tired, but it's yeah. unfortunately within the Catholic world, these circulate and they get a lot, oh, yeah. and they influence a lot of people. It goes as yeah. far as saying, you know, the, the, in, the incident with Christ and the centurion. Mm -hmm. and the Roman centurion and mm -hmm. his servant, you know, the, the queer theologist will say that was an example of Christ blessing a same-sex union because yeah. that, that centurion was gay and they mm -hmm. do all these weird lexical gymnastics with the sure, yeah. Greek term and saying that, yeah. you know. But then they also, out. no, I know, yeah. but then they get into, you know, it even gets sicker where they're saying, well, um, John, um, the Apostle John and Jesus had a homosexual relationship, and then they'll go bounce back that David yep. and Jonathan had a homosexual relationship in the Old Testament. Yep. And people yep. sit there, because I've gone to these lectures inside a Catholic church with the Blessed Sacrament and the Tabernacle, and I've sat there, and yep. people are yep. like, yeah, 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 oh yep. yeah, I never heard this, wow, oh my gosh, oh whoa, yep. wow, you know. Yeah, it's no, it, it, it's it, it's ridiculous, and um, you know, and e each of those things that you mentioned is its own distinct argument, you know. Um, uh, it, it, you know, um, what I would say uh, to to the majority of those, like with regard to the John Jesus dynamic or the um, uh, or the uh, uh, Jonathan uh, David uh, dynamic, what I would say is that they don't understand friendship. I'm going to uh, get into this, Father. This will be my next question. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's quite all right. They, they, they don't understand friendship. Uh, 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 they don't understand what friendship is and how it works. And that if people really understood what friendship is, um, you know, a great many of these things would be non-issues. It, 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 you know, uh, because, you know, we Westerners like to sexualize absolutely everything. Oh, you know, yeah. what, what, you know, well, well, you know, a friendship, you know, is a relationship. So there must be some kind of sexual component to it. No, there doesn't. The, the, a, 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 you know, a, a friendship, uh, uh, you know, uh, most times is just a friendship. Okay. Two people 
headed in the same direction, you know, who are uh, who are bound by, you know, a, a bond of uh, of mutual affection that is not erotic, uh, it, it, you know, so. The, yeah. so you, you read my mind again, Father. I'm, I, I, know I've kept you too, <laughs> I know I've kept you too long, so I'm going to just make some quick points that I think are really important. I've skipped some stuff too, but I encourage sure. people to read Father Hopko's book. Um, Great book. Years ago, there was um, a, a Catholic theologian named John Boswell. And mm. he, he unfortunately died of AIDS in the 90s, but his work has been resurrected again and i see it all over the catholic blogosphere yeah. and one of the things that he argued was that in early christianity there was a certain ceremony to bond uh people of the same sex and um yeah um father hopko and all his wisdom you know he addressed it here and he said um okay there is an orthodox right for brother making or sister making yeah uh, brother sister making called in greek i can't even adele something, which sure. some promoters of homosexual unions consider to be a service of same-sex marriage. And then he gets into, so could you say a little bit about that real quick, Father? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's not what the service was. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the service was actually one of reconciliation uh, between those who had been at enmity with one another. Um, uh, we see, uh, we actually see um, this, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen any of uh, Andre Tarkovsky's uh, films, um, but um, uh, The Passion of, um, uh, uh, of Andre Rublev. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, long, long, depressing movie. Uh, it's great. <laughs> you, you, you know, a very, very, very Russian. Very um, Russian. Uh, but um, but the um, but there's a segment that deals with the Tartar invasion of uh, uh, Russia, and uh, this one um, uh, this one prince had kind of had um, uh, had betrayed uh, uh, one of his uh, one of his allies to the Tartars. Well, they show this service actually being performed in the church, the brothering service. Okay, and it was it was specifically a service of reconciliation between those who had been at enmity with one another. Um, uh, the service could be particularly effective if we're dealing with people who um, uh, who are of nobility or who have uh, uh, you know uh, you know giant political quarrels. Uh, it, this could go kind of a long way towards saying, okay, well that's in the past now. You know, we've had the brothering, we've had the sistering, you know, and that's that. But so that's what the service is. Um, there, there not is, a same-sex marriage. No, no, there's not, there, there is zero evidence for that. Um, there, there's, uh, there, there's no evidence for that. The evidence shows that it's, it's a service of reconciliation. So, right. yeah. Right. This is another question because that I, I, I didn't want to skip because it's a, it's sort of, very topical in, in Roman Catholicism. And this is what Father Hopko wrote. Those who publicly affirm and promote homosexual behavior, like those who publicly advocate abortion, cannot be sacramental communicants in the Orthodox Church. Mm. Would, yes. that, would, would that include politicians? <laughs> would that include politicians? Well, it really should. Uh, you know, there, there's the realm of uh, there's the realm of what should be, and then there's the realm of what is. Um, uh, I, uh, it, it, I I I can't speak to any one nominally orthodox uh, politician or another. Um, uh, it, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Technically, it, you know, if if, if someone is is coming out in favor of you know abortion publicly as a matter of policy or in favor of uh you know same-sex marriage um they should not be permitted uh to uh they should not be permitted to receive communion yeah. um uh, because it's it, it's directly at odds with the teaching of the church and yeah within roman catholicism i mean this I don't think it's going to be an issue within Roman Catholicism because the bishops are just so feckless. But I mean, we've got, you know, Joe Biden, who. Is, oh, yeah. He actually married a same sex couple. You know, he married um, a same sex couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, officiated and, and, at the wedding. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, uh, 
it's not good. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not good. Yeah. So I, I, I father, I know what, what, I don't know what, you, what do you say? So, um, this is, and let, cause I've gone way over. I wanted to end with this. I love this, but I love it in terms of orthodoxy too. I think I have, I went and spoke with an, a, a Rokor, a Russian Orthodox church of, mm. outside of Russia priest. And mm. of course he, he's married and has a family. And, um, I, I enjoyed speaking with him. I think, I think this is why I'm kind of open to the Mary priesthood. I'm sort of at least, um, open to the discussion. I think clearly in orthodoxy, it's work. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the problem I think, and I've thought about it a lot, I think the problem within Roman Catholicism would be that if it was, if the priesthood was open to married men, I don't think it would attract guys like you or, or Father, yeah. Hop, or Father mm. Hopko or the Rokor yeah. priests that I knew. I think yeah. it would it would attract a more liberal um, mindset. It would it, it would attract a Mister and Mrs. Catholic mm. priest because mm. I've seen that. I have to say, not across the board, but I've seen it in the permanent diaconate within yeah. Catholicism, mm. where mm. they have you know classes for the men, and then I can't figure this out, but they also have instruction for the deacons' wives, and mm. it becomes like a co Mm -hmm. back in it it's it's very bizarre and i yeah, think that yeah. i think that would be an issue if catholicism did open it up to mm -hmm. I, I i don't know because i think there's a there's just a strong masculine core within orthodoxy i mean you just see it in well, the music you see it in the music when i was at saint ticons in, in yeah, pennsylvania yeah. the monks yeah. were so kind to me and i stayed and the music was like boom you know yes, it was just yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very strong. It's very strong. it's intense it's and it's beautiful. Um, yeah. uh, it, 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 it is uh, the well. Uh, it's it's important to remember that, particularly within the the Church of Rome, um, the insistence upon um, you know the the celibate uh, priesthood um, is a relatively recent phenomenon. That is over the course of the last several centuries. Um, uh, and that it's not a matter of dogma or doctrine. Uh, it's a matter of discipline, you know, um, uh, and, um, and, and, you know, for, uh, uh, for us, uh, it, you know, we, we've always, um, allowed our presbyters, our priests, uh, to, uh, uh to be married if, uh, if they are indeed called to marriage. Uh, and for those who are not called to it, uh, uh, then uh, then certainly they wouldn't be compelled to that. Uh, we we encourage them towards the monastic orders. In orthodoxy, um, with regard to the ordained clergy, um, the the norm is uh, either a priest is a married man, or the priest is a monk. Okay, right. it's it's very rare that you have the celibate. Orthodox priest. You, you do have it some, and I have some friends, so, uh, some uh, Orthodox priest friends who are celibate Orthodox priests, but it's, it's more the exception. The rule is more married or monastic, you know, um, uh, and it, when, it, when it comes to it, it's because um, um, men need someone um, to um to be obedient to <laughs> uh it, you know a, a a priest needs to be obedient to his wife um a priest monk a higher monk uh needs to be obedient to his abbot uh it, you know men have to have someone uh you know to be their check to be their balance you know uh and that that uh, that that's that's just the way that it is, you know. Um, you know. One so, of the things that's that's attractive to me about orthodoxy is, I mean, as somebody like myself who was abused by a Catholic priest, mm -hmm. there's a I have a and have had to uh, maneuver around gay priests. There's a yeah. comfort level that I have, not that married straight men can't be perverts, but there's yeah. a comfort level that I have with an Orthodox Mary priest with a family that I, I don't have with 
um, a Catholic priest sometimes. Sometimes I'm like this, I'm kind of looking out, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm always got an eye on, I'm like, okay, what? Yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's, I mean, that's my issue. But yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's just, and I, I think because you don't have a high rate of gay priests, there's just a, there's just a stronger masculine core. And that's what that real core priest yeah. said to me. He said, Joe, I think you have like an Orthodox heart. You're, you, you know, you're very yes. orthodox inside, I, although you're a practicing so, Roman yes. Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I know? think so, Joseph, and we've, we've got more to talk about in that regard, but we yes. won't do it on this video. No, so. and I wanted uh, to end with this, with this quote. This is from, uh, help me, Father, Abba Per, P, P-O-E-M. Abba Thank yeah. you. Okay. He wrote, for it is by warfare that the soul makes progress this is from father hopko's book that's oh, appealing yeah. that's appealing to men it's appealing to me so it i is. think i think orthodoxy has attracted men like you and then i think subsequently it'll attract women who are attracted to strong faithful orthodox men and yes. then you have good strong orthodox families with good strong orthodox sons and it's it's just a good it's a it, good it, it, environment all together that 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 is the ideal um and we frequently fall short of the ideal oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but 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 uh but that that is that is certainly the ideal that we <laughs> that we appreciate the blessings of masculinity and femininity um uh, and it, you know everything <laughs> with, with everything in its right place uh you know um you know this is uh, uh this, this is what we want uh it, it, you know um you know we we want we want to live you know as god would have us live and i love that quote uh from Abba Piman, uh the great uh, uh that it is by warfare that we uh, th- that um we enter the kingdom of heaven this is something that you know i um mention in my sermons uh, uh frequently um is that uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the yeah. violent take it by force. We're not going to be carried passively into the kingdom of heaven. If you or I get in there, we're going to be missing an eye. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to be missing a hand. We're, we're going to be limping on a peg leg. Okay. Oh. We're going we're, we're gonna to have burn scars on us because we fought the passions, because we fought the way we are. Okay. You know, I'm not okay the way I am. I'm just not, uh, it, you know, and, and, and the sooner I can admit that, then I can get better, okay? But I'm not okay the way I am. I need to be better, okay? If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, okay? It, 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 it's uh, because in the kingdom of heaven, we'll get those things back. Okay, we cannot allow anything in our lives which causes us to stumble. We and we can't allow anything in our lives which we set up as an idol. Um, it, you know, um, because the way it goes with idolatry, you know, we serve the idol and we forget the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the lover of our souls. He loves us. Okay, God loves us. The devil hates us. Okay. Um, uh, and, uh, it, you know, one character I notice who is conspicuously absent in all of this talk of, you know, queer theology is the devil. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, he, yep. he's, it's, it's like he doesn't exist, you know, um, and, and, and it's because really all of this is just kind of a pathetic merging of, you know, pop psychology um, it, you know, with a little bit of, you know, essence of Catholicism, you know, or, et, or essence of Orthodoxy or essence of Protestantism or whatever, it, it, you know, um, uh, it, it's, um, you know, it's a lame concoction. It's not the real deal. Now, you know? some of these um, characters, yeah, have made gay icons, like of somebody like Harvey Milk, you know, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. not real iconographers, but, you know. No, I know, I know, but, but I've, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it, yeah. Uh, and and it, it it misses the point, um, uh, it, it, you know that it, you know a you know a saint a saint is a person who has found victory in Jesus Christ. 
A saint is a person who is living proof that Jesus saves. And the nimbus that you see um, uh, around the head of the saint uh, in an Orthodox icon, that's the uncreated glory of God. That is, the, that is the glory of Jesus Christ reflecting off of them, okay? Uh, it, it is, that is his glory. Uh, it, it's, and an icon is an instance of this is a person who had victory. This is a person who made it. And it, it, it's, it's an astounding thing because the, the great temptation in all of this, uh, it, you know, particularly with, you know, queer affirming theology and whatnot, um, there's this fear that lies underneath it that, well, if, uh, uh, it, you know, if I don't express this part of myself, I, if I don't express this part of my being, I'm going to miss out on who I am, okay? I'm going to miss out on who I am, and I'm somehow going to lose part of my identity. But that was how the devil tempted Eve, okay? Wow. He, he tempted her, uh, letting her think that God was holding out on her and that she was going to miss out on something, something really great, if she didn't do this. You know, that's the lie that you're going to miss out. when. Really, the opposite is true. The more we give ourselves to Christ, the more we cooperate with his grace, the more we become who we actually are, okay? You become more Joseph. I become more Photius. We become more who we really, truly are in Jesus Christ. That's the amazing thing about it. Whereas, by contrast, with sin, it, 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 you know, um, uh, sin is terribly mundane. It erases identity, okay? It, 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 uh, it, it is the taking away of identity. You know, what does is, what is the death of an alcoholic look like? It looks like the death of every other single alcoholic, yeah. okay? It, it's, it's the same thing. It, it, there, there's no distinction. It's gray and it's without life. Uh, it, you know, it's a terrible, terrible thing. It, Tolkien. Uh, 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 J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, uh, whom I love very, very much, um, uh, uh, picked up on this aspect of sin in The Lord of the Rings, okay? The Nazgul, they can't remember their names. They, it, it, they're, they're never called by, by names. The, the closest you get for one of them is the Witch King of Angmar, but we don't know his name. Okay. We have the mouth of Sauron. What his proper name was, you know, uh, uh, no, nobody knew for he himself had forgotten it long ago. Gollum, okay? It, 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 Gollum isn't his name. It's that terrible swallowing noise that he makes. And uh. yet he calls himself that, okay? He's lost his identity, okay? Sin causes us to lose who we are, oh. okay? Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that, that's yeah. some heavy stuff for you. And I want you to think about that. And I want everybody to think about that because this is what sin does. It robs us of who we are. Christ Jesus gives us identity. Man, and if our identity it. is rooted in him, we become who we truly are. That's it. Father, thank you for, for allowing me to take up so much of your time. Could, could you give me and us just a, a blessing real quick? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, 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 I, I, I would like for us uh, uh, to pray, O Heavenly King. Um, uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a standard prayer in the Orthodox Church. And if anyone knows the words, please follow along. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, Who art everywhere present and fillest all things, Treasury of good things and giver of life, Come and abide in us, and cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, so oh good one. The blessing of the Lord and his mercy be upon you through his grace and love of man, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, my friend. And, uh, and uh, I hope we get to talk soon, okay? We will. God bless you. Okay. God bless. God bless you guys at home. Bye-bye. <laughs>